Namaste viewers. I am Vibhuti Jha. This is Jaipur Dialogue USA. Thank you for joining us. Please like, subscribe and support our channel, give your feedback and we always welcome that. Today I'm going to talk about something remarkably significant that has happened. You know that in Lebanon, the entire Hezbollah leadership was eliminated by Israeli defense forces. We also know that following that incident, Dr. Jayshankar, India's external affairs minister, gave a very stern warning in the United Nations General Assembly, telling Pakistan there will be consequences. There are always consequences to any provocation that happens. Now, this consequence element for me is very important, and it ought to be important for you too, because that's enshrined in our teachings of Bhagavad Gita and Ramayana. Bear that in mind, and I'm repeating. The entire element of consequences is enunciated in our Bhagavad Gita, Mahabharata, and Ramayana. The truth is told. If you read the text, and I'm sure as you know the story, even if you have not read the text, my learning from the study of Bhagavad Gita and Ramayana is that whether you are Bhishma Pitama, Dronacharya, or whoever, Kekai, Bharat, Sri Ram, Lakshman, everybody performed their duty. And for every action, they had to bear the consequences of their decisions and choices they made. Not one character in our epics of Ramayana and Mahabharata has been called a bad character. Remember that. This was my realization. Not one time has any character in Mahabharata or Ramayana has been called a negative bad character. What we do know is that each one of the individuals, each one of the individuals, men and women, in both the, both the truth telling that has happened, they bore the consequences of their action. Whether it was Bhishma Pitama, Karna, or Dronacharya, or anybody else. Everybody bore the consequences of, your, of their action. Many bore the consequences of their inaction. There, everybody bore the consequences of no action. This is very critical for us to understand. Whether you take an action, no action, or inaction, everything has a consequence. Thus, in my opinion, this stern warning from Dr. Jay Shankar to Pakistan, who has no other story against India other than hate, other than Kashmir, other than trying to run down India into thousand cut, with thousand cuts. They will have to bear the consequences. Dharma is all about that. You have to bear the consequences of your action. However, it is equally important what Prime Minister tweeted some hours ago. To the message to Mr. Mr. Netanyahu, he clearly stated that terrorism has no place in the world. Remember, he did not condemn or attack Prime Minister Netanyahu's actions. He only commented upon the fact, very significantly indeed, that terrorism has no place and violence has no place in the world. He also said, very importantly, release of hostages is key to solving regional instability that is going on or the conflict. We all know this. This is not a made up story that Hamas captured hostages on the tragic incident of October 7, and they held hostage for negotiation, particularly when their own doctrine doesn't believe in negotiated settlement with Jews. That's the approach that is taken forward. Remember, Mufti Muhammad Sai, Mufti Muhammad, uh, uh, Mehbooba Mufti, sorry, Mehbooba Mufti and uh, Asad Owaisi, they are on record 
suffering the pain of the killings of terrorist leaders in Palestine area. And Owaisi had tears for Palestines, but he has no tears for Hindu sufferings in Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Bangladesh. This is what they will have to bear the consequences too. So Prime Minister Modi made it very clear, and I am quoting that part, that hostage release, peace and stability, and no terrorism toleration is the key to operation for the rest of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it is to be borne in mind. You know, some time ago, Mr. Yogi Adityanath Ji, he had made the statement that I respect religion or Islam as much as Islam respects me, my religion. He also said that I respect Islam and, you know, humans as much as they respect Hindus. I respect Muhammad as much as, I res as they respect my Hanuman. So there was an equivalence established. There was a reciprocity demanded. And that's what is critical for everybody to recognize the time has come to stop the shenanigans and the abuse of freedom and freedom of religion and liberties for our average human being because of insistence on a specific way of life, not our way of life, their way of life. When they insist on their way of life being the ultimate way of living life, there is a problem. This also brings about an element of demanding reciprocity by you and I. You and I have to demand reciprocity. You can criticize. I have said this often and I will repeat it here that you can criticize my faith. You can make inquiries about my faith. You can ask questions about my faith. But that has to be followed by a reciprocity of me having the freedom to make similar inquiries about anybody else's faith. If you don't extend me that freedom, that freedom doesn't belong to you either. Therefore, it is very important to draw the marker, draw the line, draw the Lakshman Rekha, as I say it very often, this far and no further. If we do not draw that line, then people violate your and our sagacity, generosity, and hospitality, and they totally negate the concepts of Vasudev Kutumbagam, Atiti Devo Bhava, Ahinsa Parmo Dharma. Remember, each one of these has a follow-up line. I did a program on this and I mentioned this, that we have to also fine-tune our belief systems if somebody has to be held accountable. Accountability, responsibility, these are very important words in our teachings, in the world around us. Every politician, every country demands accountability for actions. But are we demanding accountability from those who perpetuate violence? We are not. Instead, we pander and appease them. Oh, you please don't do that. Oh, you must be unhappy. So we'll take care of your cause of unhappiness without demanding anything for ourselves. And that's what one has to remember. When people resort to vote bank politics, and that is the better noise of democracy, that when you, do, when you people insist on voting power, they say, I have a voting power, I'm a block, and I can make sure who wins and who loses. Voting power, violence, and then becoming victim. I am like this because you are responsible for that. That's what is important for all of us to bear in mind. Therefore, following the UN General Assembly address of Mr. Jaishankar, Dr. Jaishankar, who gave a clear stern warning to Pakistan that consequences will be there if you do not stop cross-border terrorism and harp on hate, the message of hate, you talk about peace, but that's not peace. You are demanding peace only on your terms and conditions without taking into account my needs and requirements. If that's not there, if reciprocity is not there, there cannot be peace. And that's where we have to remember 
the concept of Dharma Yudha. Ramayana and Mahabharata are teachings that whenever you try for peace as long as you can, but there comes a moment in time, then you have to fight, you have to arise, you have to awaken, you have to assert, and you have to act. If you don't, then people will ramrod you into their concepts of way of life. So, ladies and gentlemen, the point which I am trying to drive today is demanding reciprocity is key. Remember, whether you act or don't act, there is a consequence to those decisions. And we have to remember that what kind of an action that we are choosing to take, action of inaction or action of no action, or a positive action knowing Shatrubodh and Purvapaksh. When you know your enemy, you need to handle that in a very serious manner. We have, unfortunately, been pushed to such an extent. Look at it this way. It is important for us to remember that Bangladesh, Muhammad Yunus, talked about the atrocities on Hindu as an exaggeration and a propaganda. This is important to bear in mind. This is where the victimhood mentality comes in. Your suffering is exaggerated. But he talked about how meticulously the whole thing was planned, plotted, schemed, and executed in Bangladesh to overthrow a government and make a regime change. You can accuse everybody for anything, but that's what they did. Isn't it a pitiable situation that Muhammad Yunus was talking about with Pakistan Prime Minister to join hands? Forgetting the reality that Bangladesh was used, abused, trampled upon, raped, and annihilated by same Pakistan with whom they are trying to tie up. And they forget the ungratefulness is so rampant that India was responsible for creation of Bangladesh and giving Bengalis a life, Bengali Muslims a life. And they are against us. So, ladies and gentlemen, those two things which Prime Minister Modi in his message to Netanyahu, Prime Minister of Israel, conveyed, and Mr. Jeshankar's message is for all of us to bear in mind. Because these consequences, if they have to be acted upon, it will require, certainly, it will certainly require sacrifices by you and I, both of us and all of us. And if we are not prepared for the sacrifice, then we will have to suffer. The choice is ours, the decision is ours. And therefore, it is important that while Begum Mufti and uh, OAC have tears for the uh, departed uh, terrorist leader, they have no tears for the Hindu lives, Hindu girls, Hindu women being used, abused, and annihilated in those parts of the world. With these words, I want to remind all of you there are consequences. Whether we take action with no action, or in action. Our choices and our decisions will define the quality of life for us. With these words, I will end by saying, Satmeva Jayate, for truth to triumph, we have to arise. Thank you.